Hey guys, welcome back to the Automotive Weekly Waveform, week number eight. And we are gonna be building on the test that we did in the last two weeks. Now, week six, we did Hall Effect sensors, which are common for crankshaft and camshaft sensors. Week seven, we did VR, or variable reluctance sensors, which are also common for crankshaft and camshaft sensors. Now, the reason I did those two tests first is because this test may have a variety or a combination of those two types of sensors. And that is going to be the camshaft crankshaft correlation test. Now I'm going to do this test two ways. The first, I'm going to use a snap on tool um, that, that most people haven't used unless you had a snap on scope quite a while ago. This is the verdict M2 scope meter module. It is a wireless scope and it was designed for the original Windows XP uh, verdict. But I can, I can pair this to my Zeus. It also has a standalone screen, so I can watch the scope with just this. I can use it as a DVOM as well. So I'm gonna cover the setup of this really quick. We'll connect to the camshaft and crankshaft position sensors on my 2007 Toyota Highlander Hybrid and we will see what type of waveform we can get. And then we'll boot up the Zeus and see if we get the same waveform from the Zeus. So on this tool, it defaults to only having one channel active. So if we hit F1, uh, it kind of scrolls us through the menu. I haven't used this thing a lot, um, but I'll, I'll try and get my way through it. So display, we want channel two active as well. Um, so I can, I can deselect both channels, one channel, two channel. I think this changes the position of where they're at on the screen, flip flops them. Um, so that's good. We can change the vertical point of channel one or channel two. Both are kind of low right now. And since we are going to be working on variable reluctance sensors, they are probably going to be fluctuating around zero volts. So I'm going to move both of them up to the middle of the screen. And actually I may need to separate them a little bit. I'm not quite sure what we're gonna end up with. So from this screen, if we wanna move them, our vertical position up and down, we see the little up arrow on the left and down arrow on the right. Um, so channel one is here, channel two is here. Channel one I'll move up um, and channel two I'll leave at the bottom. We may have to move these around a little bit. We'll screw to the next one. Um, we have our peak feature invert, our coupling option. We have some presets here um, and our trigger settings. So I think we'll probably use trigger settings. Let's go slope. Um, first off, channel, what channel are we gonna run it on? Um, a little toggle jumps up between one and two. We'll probably wanna to toggle off our cam sensor. And then slope, as I push this button, we see the option at the top change. I know it's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can zoom you in and keep you in focus. So as I change the slope option, we go from rising edge to falling edge and then back to rising. The level, same up and down button function, it moves our trigger point there. And then we can switch the channel again. So let's jump out of that. Display, our scaling, I'm guessing we're gonna need um, to adjust the scaling a little bit. So let's go to scale. Um, we're currently on channel one because that's what's shown up at the top. And it says 20 volts. That is probably gonna be adequate. Okay, now I remember after fumbling through here. Um, so channel one is active here. So all my settings that are gonna be affected here, um, at least on our scale, are gonna be cha changing channel one. Um, 20 volts is probably adequate. Um, to go to channel two, we'll hit up. We'll go to our channel menu. We'll flip flop one and two. That puts channel two here. We'll go back down and we can change the scale of it. Um, it's already on 20 volts, so we should be good there. Now from this menu, we can also change our time base up and down. Now right now I'm on half a second um, total time. We may wanna see more than that. Um, I'll, I'll crank it up a little bit, maybe. So it looks like I can't do a trigger if I have over a second, at least using the scope module by itself. Um, so we'll go to a half a second and see what we can see. I'll go ahead and get connected to this vehicle. Now my Highlander has a crank sensor and two cam sensors. I'm only gonna tie into one of the cam sensors for this video. A lot of you guys have two channel scopes. You may have to get a crankshaft position sensor 
and then measure the cam for one bank and then jump to another bank. If it's a newer vehicle that has, you know, dual overhead cam, V6 with VVT on both cams, it may have four cam sensors. So you may have to check, you know, four different captures and then kind of combine them and compare them. Um, but you can still get it done with a two channel scope. One channel scope, we're not gonna be able to do a crankshaft camshaft correlation because we don't have anything to compare channel one to. It's just gonna be the single channel. So you will need a two channel scope for this test. Now this vehicle uses VR sensors. So I think my cam and my crank are both gonna be VR. They're both two wire sensors. I'm gonna use a common ground. I'm gonna hook one ground up to the engine block or the battery. Uh, the battery is easier to get to. And then I'm gonna hook my channel one up to the crankshaft position sensor, which is on the front of the engine. The cam sensor is located on the cylinder head. It's fairly easy to get to, at least for the forward bank, which I believe is bank two on this engine. Okay, and here's what I got. We have the camshaft position sensor, um, which I, I don't know if my trigger is still set up. Oh, my trigger's on channel one now. Okay, so I put, move my trigger to where it's on channel one, and now it is nice and stabilized. Now I may have, can you guys see that? I may have multiple um, triggers on my, my camshaft. See how the, the crank is bouncing around a little bit? I probably need to add a little bit of time onto the screen, which I may lose my trigger. And actually we can see the missing tooth on the crank. If I line up my trigger with that, that little peak after the missing tooth, um, then we should be able to synchronize fairly well. So let me go back to my trigger, move it back to channel one, change the level back up. Went too high there. So that stabilized it fairly well. Um, we can see that my cam is bouncing from side to side. Let's go back and add a little more time onto the screen. And at that point, I lose my trigger. No, it's still on there. So, you know, this may not be the best, you know, scope for actually verifying um, cam crank correlation just because it's hard to to keep everything lined up but we do have a freeze button here so we could freeze that we could review it we could try to count the teeth um, but at least we can kind of you know see what's going on with this capture we can see our crank sensor signal the rapid signal high resolution signal we can see our camshaft position sensor signal um, which obviously has multiple teeth on it and not just one tooth like my Forerunner had that we checked the other day. So now let me sync this up to my Zeus and we'll get a capture that way. So I'm gonna flip this over to Bluetooth. Now I already went through the process of syncing it to the Zeus, but in Bluetooth mode, now we need to go to the Zeus, which has just turned green. My Zeus is powered on on my, on my toolbox, so it probably connected to it. So on the Zeus, if I go to scope multimeter, you see that my options have changed. I know how no longer have the option for a four channel lab scope. I only see a two channel lab scope because that's all that the, uh, the Vertic M2 module has. So let's go to two channel lab scope and it does not pull the settings over, I don't think, from the, from the other meter. Um, it might, but I don't know if it does. Um, we just might have happened to have a close setting on the screen. Let's change our time base. Just so we can get an overview of, of the entire capture. And then we'll go back to a rapid time base to record our, our capture. So it looks like my scaling is probably pretty close to what I need. I can see all the waveform nice and clear. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm gonna quicken up my time base. We know our, our capture is gonna show us a nice waveform. I'm gonna record a little bit here and then I'm gonna hit the stop button. We're gonna zoom out. Now I probably didn't need to go down to 10 milliseconds on my time base. Um, that's probably a little 
higher resolution than what I needed. The vehicle just shut off. Obviously, it thinks that the engine is warm enough to run the heater for a while. And I'm still zooming, still zooming. Okay, I'm not sure why it was taking so long to zoom. I'm gonna go to 20 milliseconds because I don't think I need quite the resolution I had. We'll get a capture here. We'll hit the stop button and we will zoom out. And perhaps it takes longer to zoom when I'm connected to the wireless scope module because um, normally it doesn't take this long when I'm using the integrated scope meter that's on the back of the Zeus. So I suppose that's one downside of using the wireless scope module. Okay, so now that it's done zooming, I did find out that it takes quite a bit longer to, to, to get my zoom on with the wireless meter. Um, let's jump in here. I think this is probably gonna be a pretty good waveform here. Uh, what you wanna see is you wanna see a f uh, two full rotations of the crankshaft. So let me drop that down here, get this bar out of the way, and I'll throw up some cursors. Our missing tooth is not necessarily TDC, and it's I don't think it's ever TDC on any engine, but it's an indication of, of one full rotation of the crankshaft. Um, so we wanna see two rotations, which is gonna be a complete cycle, because each piston's gonna go up and down twice. We're gonna have the intake stroke, the compression stroke, the power stroke, and the exhaust stroke. It's a four stroke engine. So two full rotations of the crankshaft. Um, so that is going to be our span. We can see that one of our triggers for the camshaft or one of the pulses falls right in the gap of the missing tooth. And then we have another two that are you know in between there somewhere that necessarily aren't falling into that group. But if we had a known good waveform, we could look at it and say, okay, well, their cam sensor dropout was right inside my missing tooth area. Um, let me drag this back over. And if we zoom in a little more, get that out of our way, um, you know, we, we get a little more detail. So our cam sensor has a rising edge and then it drops down and that, that falling edge is in our missing tooth area. So that's pretty much it. Anytime you see a known good waveform posted, it's typically gonna have two rotations of the crank visible plus the cam sensor signals um, that are in question. And sometimes they'll do an additional capture that's zoomed in to any type of sync signal. Um, on this one, it is a dropout in the cam sensor that falls right into the area where the missing tooth is. You know, if I, uh, if I was a certain number of teeth over, then I would probably want to zoom in where that missing tooth is and be able to get that drop out so we can count how many teeth over our sync signal is. So that's it for this one. Um, I thought it was kind of cool to use the old wireless scope meter. Uh, we looked at the waveform on there. We looked it up on the Zeus. You get a lot more accuracy on the Zeus. You can zoom in, um, move that waveform around a little bit, find out where your stuff is, plus you can save the waveforms, you can't save it if you're running standalone on here. There's no uh, memory card or anything in the scope module. Um, but it's cool because you can do voltmeter things with that separate without tying up a scan tool. So that's gonna wrap it up for this one. We're on week eight. We need a crank sensor, cam sensor correlation, uh, preferably with two rotations of the crankshaft, what our sync signal is for the camshaft. Um, you will need a two channel scope minimum for this one. If you are a power user and you have a four channel scope or beyond, and you're already checking a vehicle for multiple cam sensor, crank sensor correlations, then go ahead and add those other channels in there. But for the basics, we just need one crank sensor, one cam sensor, post that waveform up on the Facebook group. If you're not already a member, I'll put a link to that down below. We do a different video every week. You have all week long to perform the test upload your pictures and we will review them on Saturday night and talk about the different captures and the known bads and known goods, um, what some other people's techniques are. And then every Saturday night we will review those waveforms uh, in a live stream. Sunday we'll get a new assignment and then we get another week to get that completed. If you guys like this video in the series, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.